it is lesson 7 this time and uh, we are going to discuss about rhinoceros beetles in the family of dynasty day they are actually known as the strongest of all animals and the reasons behind it is really really shocking the dynasty Itinae are among the largest of beetles reaching more than 15 cm which is actually 6 inches in length but are completely harmless to humans because they cannot bite nor sting most are actually black grey or greenish in color and some are covered in small soft hairs another name given to some of these insects is the hercules beetle because they possess a strand of herculean proportion some species have been anecdotally claimed to lift up to 850 times their own weight that would be equivalent to me lifting nine fully glow grown male elephants is actually 65 times the common names refer to the characteristic horns borne only by the males of most species in the group. Each has a horn on, on the head and another horn pointing forward from the center of the thorax. The horns are used in fighting other males during the mating seasons and for digging also through soil which they go on high during the day. The size of the horn is a good indicator of nutrition as even I said in one of my videos. The bigger the horn means that the, the, the beetle has been receiving more nutrients during its larva stage and it has a more you know physical health rhinoceros beetles are relatively resilient a healthy adult male can live up to two to three years and that you know we can say it's 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 a lot for for the insect that small the females really live long after they mate Dynasty or rhinoceros beetles are the sum family of the scarab fam beetle family, Scrabidae. Over 1,500 species and 225 genera of rhinoceros beetles are known. Many rhinoceros beetles are well known for their unique shapes and large sizes. Some famous species are, for example, the Atlas beetle, Calcosoma atlas, common rhinoceros beetles. Silotrupus ulicces, elephant beetle, Megasoma elephants, European rhinoceros beetle, Orictus nasicornis, Hercules beetle, Dynasties Hercules, Japanese rhinoceros beetles, or Kabubotumushi, Alom, which is scientifically named as Alomirina dicotoma, Ox beetles, also there. Strategist Alois and Eastern Hercules beetle dynasties Titilis and actually there is a rhinoceros beetle which lives among us in the UAE as well It's called as Orictus elegans The elegant rhinoceros beetle Oh yes, and then let me tell you all something People actually think co uh, Cockroaches and beetles are very similar and indeed they are not Their life stages are different as well as, you know, cockroaches are actually pests, while beetles help, you know, in many different ways. They recycle organic nutrients, they help pollinate some plants, and they actually are some pets for many people as well. You know, you can actually identify a beetle from a cockroach is that they have large heads and distinctive mandibles for chewing. The beetle is typically smaller than a cockroach and has a harder body because of the exoskeleton. I remember be beetles eat other insects which are usually pests which as we saw in the video which is the lady beetle and you know which makes beetles a friend to humans however you know cockroaches have a flat and oval shape with six legs and, and long slender antennae coming from their heads so actually beetles are much more you know of a nature recyclers you know though insects which you know don't have any harm to human beings indeed we benefited from them in many different ways however some are actually known as pets however rhinoceros beetles only lay their eggs in trees that have been already destroyed by other beetles and so you know saving these animals will benefit in many ways we will have more plants which they pollinate 
and then we'll have these friendly animals to kill the pests such as aphids and other insects. Now moving on to the life cycle, these beetles uh, larval stages can be several years long. Say for example such as the cicadas and uh, for example cicadas spend around 12 to 17 years on the ground as a larva and then come up for mating if the conditions are right. Even so as the desert locusts, they also spend around maybe 20 years on the ground as larva and then come out if the conditions are right. The larva of beetles feed on rotten wood and the adults feed on nectar, plants and fruits. However, there are some that they don't even feed during the, the adulthood. And uh, first the larva hatch from the eggs and they later develop into a pupa before they reach adult status. And the female can lay up to 50 eggs on average. So as you can see in the picture over here, eggs will take 12 days, the grub 19 days and at the second stage 21 days, third 32, pupa 20 and adult stage will take around 95 days. However, it depends on the species as well. So, uh, as per defense, you know, many beetles, rhinoceros beetles, usually, as we said earlier, they cannot bite nor sting, so they are very safe to handle. But in the defense, most of them can actually make a loud hissing sound from, you know, rubbing their abdomens to their wing cases. But they cannot bite, so they are very safe and cool creatures to handle as well. The body of an adult rhinoceros beetle is covered by a thick exoskeleton. A pair of thick leg lie thick wings or lie atop another set of membranous wings underneath. We like again said that those are wing membranes. And uh, allowing the rhinoceros beetle to fly. Although not very efficiently owing to its large size. Because you know they have a heavy, heavier body with you know a very large body so they cannot fly in you know long distances. Their best protection, however, from predators is their size and stature. Additionally, since they are nocturnal, they avoid many of their predators during the day. When the sun is out, they hide under logs or in vegetation to camouflage themselves from the few predators big enough to want to eat them. And actually, you know, they, they dig quickly into sand, and that again shows the power of these magnificent creatures. Really, you know, the power of a rhino, actually. If rhinoceros beetles are disturbed, uh, some can release very loud hissing squeaks as we said. And the hissing squeaks are created by the rubbing their abdomens against the ends of their wing covers. And these aren't actually voice, vocal, you know, voice noises or vocal cords. They're actually, instead they are actually produced when the beetle rubs its abdomens and wings together. Like, you know, the, the same way as crickets do so. And the giant horns. Again, the horns depend on nutrients, how much nutrients they have received, but some are really magnificent and I would wish to see one of them alive. Because, you know, climate change and such problems are actually reducing their numbers, even people seeing them as pets and being scared of them, they are actually killing them as well. But seeing these magnificent beetles that really look like mythical creatures is really something of a dream. One way the beetles use these extreme expense is to dig themselves into leaf litter and soil to escape danger. Their horns also help them to do this, you know, and the horns of the male rhinoceros beetles are used to, you know, drive other males away from a female beetle during mating rituals. The horns of the males are used for fighting, both over females and for feeding sites on trees, logs and even crops. The horns are used not to inflict injury, but are to force rivals from the disputed area and just remove them you know wherever they are in spite of their fierce appearance these beetles are harmless and feed only upon plant material the male japanese rhinoceros beetle for example wields a huge forked horn on his head as you can see on the right top right and it looks like a juicing weapon and the male uses it to pry and flip other males off a branch but it's also a billboard a prominent and completely honest advertisement for males quality. The horns are extremely variable, you know, small males have a small, you know, heads, so they have small horns as well, while big ones have, you know, larger horns, which are actually called prongs, uh, that can grow, you know, two-thirds of their 
body length. Well-fed beetles may have larger wings and bodies that poorly than the poorly fed ones, but they are they have much larger horns as well. Uh, that's a very good question actually. Uh, we can actually, it's very hard to find them during the larva stage, but usually at night you go near to parks and desertish areas where it's actually moist, you know, relatively moist. Uh, you can actually go and find them like moving around. Uh, actually, the video which you saw right now over here was actually created around May or so. And so, some of, if you're lucky enough, you can find both male and females everywhere, but mostly males are out, you know, males are out going and feeding and moving around. And um, it's very rare, recently I've seen, it's, it's actually a very rare thing to find a male with large horns. But you know, finding one of them is actually very good. But even, you can follow them with their sounds. Some of them actually you can find them by digging if you think, for example, you're suspicious, that, okay, they may exist here. I've actually seen dead bodies around here of the, these insects, so they're for sure underground. So you can maybe, if you're searching anywhere in the mornings in a moist area, you can actually dig and you can find them. And as I said earlier, they cannot bite those things, so they are very safe to handle. And uh, or or if you're lucky enough, you can just go around like depending on the time. You can go and check like around May to June. Uh, all around, you can go and check if you can find them. Uh, they'll be mostly out at night from eight o'clock onwards. So maybe if you're lucky enough, you can actually find them. So they're found in moist conditions, actually moist. You know, near to logs, under logs, under rocks. But again, usually if there are not rocks and logs, they're mostly found under soil itself. So yes, first we'll go to see the Hercules beetle. And I can see here two, two males are fighting. I don't know over what, of course, over food, I think. And so yeah, the adult Hercules beetles feed on fresh and rotting fruits. Uh, and they have been observed feeding on peaches, pears, apples and grapes in captivity. And you know, uh, the Hercules beetles, called as Dynasties Hercules, which you can see the scientific name up there as well, is a species of rhinoceros beetle native to the rainforests of Central America, South America, and the Lesser Antilles. It is the longest extinct species of beetles in the world, and is also one of the largest flying insects in the world as well. Male Hercules beetles may reach up to 173 millimeters, or if you can say 7 inches in length, including the horn, making them the longest beetles on earth. Yeah, the diets actually that their larvae also feed on, uh, which is actually they are, they are actually saprocelophagus, which means they feed on rotten wood in which they also reside, you know, during the two year development stage. And the adult of the Hercules beetle species are capable of creating a huffing sound, generating by, you know, again rubbing their abdomens against the electra or wing gases, to serve, as you know, to serve as a warning to predators. And within their native rainforest habitats, the adult beetles, which again are nocturnal, forage for fruits at night and hide or burrow within the leaf litter during the day. And now the awesome part we can say is that the comeback behavior between males. It has been observed that male dynasties Hercules will engage in combat to win position and mating rights to, the, to a male. You know, to, for, for female we can say. Male Hercules beetles typically use their large horns to settle mating disputes. These fights can cause significant physical damage to the, you know, opponent. But may also include possible damage to the female in process. During fights, the males attempt to grab and pin their rival between the cephalic and thor thoracic horns to lift and throw them. The successful mate, the male wins, mating rights with the, with the female. The next you have got is the Atlas beetle, Calcosoma atlas. So, uh, the Atlas beetle is a very large beetle uh, in the family Scrabidae, found in Southeast Asia. And the males have actually three prominent horns, which you can see in the picture as well. And the species is named uh, for Atlas, the giant Greek mythology who supported the skies. Calcosoma Atlas, like other beetles of the genus Calcosoma, is remarkable for its size, as is common in the Scrabidae family. Males are larger than the females, 
reaching a length of 60 to 130 millimeters which is 2.4 to 5.1 inches and the females are about 25 to 60 millimeters which is 0.98 to 2.36 inches the larva of the atlas beetle is known for its fierce behavior including biting if touched unverified reports exist of larvae that live together fighting to their deaths if they have an insufficient space or food and even they come back behavior between males males have specialized horns on their heads and thorax that they use to fight with each other to gain mating rights with females and also for food as well the next we have got is the Molin Campi beetle, Calcosoma Molly Campi, which is again a species of almost atlas beetle. It's uh, actually that they are characterized by having two horns, two large horns, forward projecting on the protonum or thorax, and another larger forward and upward projecting horn on the head. They also have a distinct metallic luster, you know which is the reason behind their genus name which derives from Greek chalco and is the name is the com combining from of chaclos meaning copper males may measure up to 110 millimeters which is actually 4.3 inches uh, from the tip of the head horn to the to the end of the electra which is the wind case females are actually much smaller usually uh, only 45 to 60 millimeters which is actually 1.8 to 2.4 inches and lack horns atlas beetle males are renowned for their uh, three horns two on the pronotum and one on the head owing to environmental conditions not all larvae grow to similar sizes yeah and those that live in harsher conditions adult beetles become small in small males, the horns are very short and the head horn extends almost vertically upwards and usually has three small prongs. But in large males, the horns are enormous and the head horn projects mainly anteriorly with an upward curvature. The size of the horns relative to the size of the beetle is thus positively allometric meaning the horns are you know much larger related to the body size of the beetle in large males compared to small males actually which you know have very short horns uh, uh, in the wild uh, the Chalcam or chalcosoma species live in the rainforest and palm plantations and males and females separately meet at feeding sites for instance wo wounded trees where the beetles drink the sap they reach new areas by flying around at night as the other you know species of atlas beetle large males are very aggressive towards other males but small males are more peaceful lacking the body size and large horns to fight now combat behavior between males at the feeding sites large males attempt to dominate the site by sheer size and chase smaller males away the dominance ensures that big males mating rights with any females that come to the site and also for the food as well. However, if two equally large males meet, neither is usually prepared to back away and they fight each other using their large horns while also trying to trip their opponents with their long front legs. A male tries to pin a rival between the head horn which it can move upwards or downwards as it raises or lowers its head and two pronotum horns the beetle when then tries to throw its rivals off the branch or throw it on its back and that means that that beetle has lost the fight and then the females borrow into the soil or into old rotten hardwood logs to lay eggs the larva go through three stages of development and may reach a massive weight of 100 grams at the end of larva stage 3, the larva creates a large oval cocoon of decayed wood and, and earth where it transforms into a pupa, which hatches out into another 2 months and the total generation span from egg to adult beetle may take around 13 to 18 months.
Now we have got the five horned rhino, so to speak. Iptorus glacilicornis. The five horned rhinoceros beetle is a beetle that has four large horns on the prothorax and one extra horn on the cephalic, or as you know, yeah, we can say on the head. The body is covered by a thick exoskeleton and a pair of thick wing covers lay atop another set of membranous wings underneath, allowing the beetle to fly. Although you know not not very efficient, owing again to its big big size, its length is again 50 to 95 millimeters. As a larva, its diet is rotten wood, and as adult, it consists of nectar, plant sap, and fruits. So actually, there is a very fascinating evolutionary history behind the uh, wing covering, the wing cover, the heart, the wing. That, that actually is a wing as well. Same like dragonfly four, four wings, these were actually wings before. And after a very long time, they slowly hardened to protect the other wing inside. And that shows how extraordinary evolution can you know deep. The next which we have got is the elegant rhinoceros beetle. Found throughout the UAE and the Middle East. It is a large black beetle, stocky body with brown hair at the bottom and in front of the mouth parts. Uh, no antenna are present, thorax have large indentation, shiny smooth abdomen, front legs are modified for digging and distinct hooks on the end of the legs for holding onto branches. It is found throughout the UAE and Middle East and this beetle is unfortunately rated as pest, feeds mainly by boring into food stocks, ultimately causing the fruit to die. Uh, uh, there is actually one per generation per year. Adults first appear from mid April to mid May, again according to region, and are present until October. Mature female lays up to 20 to 25 eggs in their trees, decaying vegetation or the damaged acels of fronds. The rhinoceros beetle usually lays its eggs in trees that have already been weakened by oral beetles. Newly hatched larvae grow on the dead tissue of the palm tree and feed on it until they are big enough. And then we have got over here is the Japanese rhinoceros beetle, Alomirina nikotoma. The males are much larger again, reaching a length of 40 to 80 millimeters, while females can reach a length of about 40 to 60 millimeters. Their eyes may be white or red and are able to low light levels and this species is nocturnal like many others and the body is dark brown while the veteran part of the body is black brilliant and the front legs you know are usually long like all dinosaurs today species these beetles are strong flyers although they never cover long distance during the flight because again of their large body size and the, the proportion of their wings. The Japanese rhinoceros beetle will almost live on most of its life underground for it only lives around four months as an actual beetle, it's actually an adult. Its diet is you know three saps, fruits and anything which is sugary and again it's compact behavior between the males there's actually a long cephalic horn of the species that has a you know cast shape in the form of a letter y which you can see and it is used by males during the mating period and to maintain territories and by means of their fourth horn they lift other males off the ground and throw them into the air in addition to their impressive and ornate protuberance they also have a smaller thoracic we can see thoracic horn also forked as well. We can see we can see it's on the top of the head. The earliest beetles will actually come out of the ground in late spring, and they will usually die around middle of September to early October, and they usually will die after mating and laying eggs. The eggs are laid directly on in the ground, then hatch into a wriggling larva, which usually mature in a year. But life as an adult is short, 
in less than four months. He must find and defend the territory and mate. Combat occurs between males competing for mates. Males between you know beetles normally die in the fall after mating many times. Whereas females beetles normally die after laying eggs. joining this lesson hope you enjoyed and make sure you click on that subscribe button like and share so we can reach a higher audience and of course be able to reach more people and spread awareness and help them learn about the natural world be curious love the natural world and protect it